Good morning. Peace be with you. My topic is the love of the Prophet in Gulen's Sufism. So to understand this, we should have a little bit background about Sufism, spirituality, uh, Prophet Muhammad. All of these will be a part of this presentation. And I have about 21 pages, and Dr. Marty gives me only 20 minutes. And actually, even he asked me to sign, so I signed that I will not pass 20 minutes. A signature, I gave him a signature too. Um, when I, uh, before coming here, I googled uh, Fethullah Gülen and the love of the prophet. How many entries do you expect that uh, uh, we could find? Believe me or not, nothing. Nothing came, Fethullah Gülen and the love of the prophet. And I thought to myself, this is not fair. This person who is so much involved in the love of prophet, there is nothing on Google. So I thought, uh, if you ask what is the most important and the least known aspect of Fethullah Gülen, I would say his love of the prophet. It's not known, unfortunately. He's known in his uh, uh, close associate, in his, among his uh, associates, but not generally. It's not known. Loving the prophet is an essential element of Sufism. In fact, not only Sufis, but all Muslims are expected to love the prophet. That is why many Muslims name their children after the prophet of Islam, Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. According to a recent survey, the name of Muhammad was rated the most popular boy's name in where? In England, not in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Therefore, uh, Muslims express their love for the Prophet in a variety of ways. As another expression of this love in many parts of the Islamic world, Muslims celebrate the birthday of the Prophet, Mewlud. Although Gulen finds this annual celebration of um, the birthday of the Prophet insufficient, he says it's insufficient, but it's good and it's acceptable. It should be actually in a larger way, in a larger uh, scale. While all Muslims express their love in a variety of ways, Sufis' love is much more concentrated and much more deeper. It is generally expressed in their mystical writings and intimate conversations with the Prophet, sometimes with God, and asking God to send blessings to the Prophet again. In Sufi parlance, love for the master is essential. That is because the master is seen as a representative of the esoteric function of the prophet. Therefore, the Sufi's love for the master indirectly is a love for the prophet. And of course, the love for the prophet is an expression of the love for God. Since Fethullah Gülen does not belong to a particular Sufi order, he is, as I coined in my earlier article, a Sufi in his own way. His love for the Prophet is a direct love, and he has no mediating master. It should be noted that Gülen's love of Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, does not exclude love for other prophets. In fact, even such a deep love of the prophet of Islam increases Gulen's love for all pre-Islamic prophets. Because in Islam, 
As one hadith saying of the Prophet indicates, Prophets are brothers, and therefore loving one does not exclude loving another. Now, question comes to our mind, how would Muslim mystics express their love of the Prophet? Many mystics have expressed their feelings and, and their love for the Prophet through their supplications, praying, as well as through their chanting of blessings for the Prophet. Some poet mystics elaborate extensively on the night journey of the Prophet and ascension of the Prophet, or what is known Mirajiye. Following the Quran injunction to believers to send blessings to the Prophet, Sufis have expressed their feelings in their intimate conversation with the Prophet, through which one can witness the depth of their love, as well as their religious, spiritual experiences. For example, one of the predecessors of Gulen, Mevlana Khalid, a 19th century prominent Nakshi master, expresses his feeling and his love for the Prophet by describing a variety of aspects of Prophet's spiritual life. For example, he speaks of the Prophet's spiritual rank, the Prophet as a reflection of the divine, as a perfect human being, and enlightenment and mercy to the entire humanity. It seems that Gulen's address to the Prophet and his descriptions of him are in line with that of Mevlana Khalid. The difference is timing. Gulen speaks according to the conditions of his time and therefore uses terminology that indicates this. Here I mention many uh, predecessors of, of Gulen, particularly uh, mystics such as Abu Talib al-Mekki, uh, Rumi. These are very prominent figures. One important figure is Mevlana Jami. Uh, Gulen frequently refers to Jami and his writings. He uh, also uh, a theologian, he's a theologian, a mystic, a linguist, a poet, a remarkable personality. One of his poems uh, are very famous with regard to the love of the prophet. He is trying to reach the city of the prophet, Medina. He has, he has no chance to go. So he wants to send his greetings through the wind. So he says, O oh, oh morning breeze, O oh morning breeze, one day if you arrive at the respected land of harams, Mecca and Medina, convey my greetings to the tomb in which the respected prophet resides. Later, he finds a chance and visits this place. Now, these uh, mystics, these uh, Muslim Sufis, constitute a legacy of love for the Prophet in the Islamic tradition of Sufism. Gulen's love for the Prophet stems from this rich legacy, as well as from the Quran and from the sayings of the Prophet. In fact, when we look at Gulen's writings, we can divide them into two sections, prose and poems. The love of the prophet must uh, uh, much more visible and passionately expressed in his poems. And then I will give an example from these poems. As I mentioned, Gulen's love for the Prophet comes from his love for God and his strong faith in the prophethood of Muhammad. Analyzing Gulen's love of the Prophet, one is reminded of the famous 
Sufi concept known as annihilation in the Prophet, all, or what's called fena fi rasul. This is a spiritual state in the Sufi mystical path that through which one forgets oneself and annihilates, annihilated in the existence of the Prophet. Even without knowing the entire feelings and backgrounds in which Gulen wrote, looking at the poems of Gulen, the reader is moved by passion, depth, and the religious experience that is manifested in these poems. It seems to me that Gulen's love for the prophet is experiential. The words cooking is strongly used by mystics to write, to be, to be cooked. In this case, one can say that the words Gulen used are cooked in a burning heart and then came to surface to form a poem. One can imagine that many companions of the Prophet would have such a love for the Prophet. Indicating this, Gulen says, Prophet Muhammad's companions knew him and loved him more than, any, more than they loved themselves. They were prepared to sacrifice their, loves, their lives to the Prophet. One of the poems that seems to me very interesting uh, and is taken place in Gulen's famous book called uh, Broken Plectrum or Kirk Mizrab is this. The poem is entitled Do Not Leave Me Alone. My heart and my eyes are opened with you. Obstacles can be overcome with you. When your name is said, light spread from it. Rise upon my soul. Do not burn me with the pain of separation. For God's sake, do not leave your servant alone. I am the servant outside your door, and you are the sultan. I am the servant outside your door, and you are the sultan. You are a refuge from God for those who have been left on the roads. If I am a corpse, you are its soul. Rise upon my soul. Do not burn me with the pain of separation. For God's sake, do not leave your servant alone. One can see here an expression of an utmost level of need, a need that goes beyond food and water. A medieval Islamic mystic stresses the primacy of need in fulfilling the work of the soul. Gulen, by such a passionate closeness to the Prophet, expresses his utmost need for the love of the Prophet. To an extent, he cannot imagine his ex existence without the existence of the Prophet. That is why Sufis would call this an annihilation in the personality of the Prophet. As one mystic indicates, it is the melting of one soul and flowing toward the soul of the Prophet to become united with his soul. Another poem of Gulen entitled The Rose of my heart. Gulen says, any soul that loves you is majestic, O messenger of God. His eyes and heart are full, O messenger of God. I swear anyone who gets even an atom of love of your beauty becomes an inseparable servant at your door, O messenger of God. Those who have reached your realm want no other favors. At your neighborhood, every eye 
is misted over. Those who circle around your light, flying constantly, they are a branch of your spirit, O messenger of God. In your climate, birds with golden wings fly. Your climate is the path of birds, O messenger of God. These are considerably uh, uh, emphasizing Sufi terms. Another, in another occasion, Gulen wrote a poem entitled Moon Face. This is an expression of beauty in the uh, uh, Islamic tradition, in the culture, in Eastern culture mostly. You don't say sun face. Moon face is much, much more important. The expression is indicative of the utmost beauty of the Prophet. Gulen again speaks of the Prophet. My moon face, my open word, my soul be sacrificed to you. My heart is amazed by you. Your, de your daffodil glance, how inexorable its effect. My Sultan, I asked you for help. Look at my heart. There is an arrow and pain in its depth. The remedy is with you. O oh, one whose existence is light, whose world is happiness, whose word is the Quran, you are the remedy for all my sorrows. I am full of fire. Never leave me in separation. My soul is mourning. As sorrowful and miserable and suffering with many problems, I am leaning at your door. I don't know another ember nor a fire. I am burned by you. I have been awakened by you. O light who came from the divine throne to the world, O the full moon in the sky, your light has enlightened. Eyes have not seen a charming beloved like you in the entire universe. Your beauty is even brighter than the sun. In these poems, one can see how Gulen frequently uses terms such as heart, passion, and burning, which are commonly used by almost all Muslim mystics. <clears throat> While many Sufis will have this longing for their master in the Sufi order, and some directly for the Prophet, Gulen mainly addresses the Prophet of Islam with these passionate terms as his unique master. In a poem entitled You, You, Gulen once again speaks of the hearts full of love and the allegory of honey, as many mystics do. Glenn says, <clears throat> in the mouth is candy and sherbet. In the hearts, your name breathes. If one tests your life, if one tastes your love, one does not care anymore about cream and honey. Cream and honey in the Eastern culture is counterpart of American peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> <clears throat> if hearts had loved you, if they had union with you, if they had entered your close circle, why would they care about position and possession? Separation is a term that is frequently used by Sufi when they complain about their separation from the beloved. The beloved can be the master, the prophet, or the divine. One can see this mystical term of separation in Gulen's writings extensively. In the following poem, Gulen once again clearly indicates his sorrow of being distant from the prophet. I will skip some of this. As I said, 20 pages cannot be finished in 20 minutes. 
it is impossible, technically. So I will go to actually one of the most important uh, uh, poems of Gulen about the prophet. And it's very well known. I googled this also, and I am pleased that this poem in particular came uh, three, 4,000 times, is, is mentioned 4,000 times on, on Gulen, uh, I mean uh, on Google. And this Gulen most well-known poem that's known as uh, The Rose of Medina. Like many Sufis, Gulen uses rose as a symbol of the love of the Prophet. Therefore, the Prophet of Islam in his poem is always described as the rose. A rose that gives light, a rose that gives water, a rose that gives beloved, that is beloved. In this poem, once again, Gulen's annihilation in the Prophet is expressed. For Gulen, once the Prophet is mentioned or remembered, nothing else in this world deserves to be remembered. In fact, in the Sufi parlance, this is a step that will prepare one for annihilation in God, or fenafila. Gulen's heart is like a dove in this poem. He wants to reach the prophet, but needs a feather to reach him. A feather from wings of the prophet. Gulen asks for that feather. He is a lover, like Majnun, very uh, legendary lover. He finds the face of the prophet like a sun. If the sun sets, the prophet's face replaces the sun. Indicating his annihilation in the prophet, Gulen asks for a new rising. This rising, this is very similar to the Sufi's legacy, <coughs> indicated in the saying of the prophet. Yes, the Sufi, as the prophet says, has to die before he dies so that he can spiritually be resurrected. In this poem, Gulen speaks of this spiritual resurrection, which is similar to what another mystic indicates. The sun at midnight rises only at the dark night of the soul, or the water of life is found in the darkest valley. Now let's listen to what Gulen says. I remembered you again and everything was deleted from my memory. I intentionally use the word deleted because we delete a lot of things today. But in Gulen's understanding, because I could have said erased as well, translation of the term, it is possible to say. But in Gulen's understanding, deleting is something profoundly different. I remembered you again and everything was deleted from my memory. Your image traveled on the hills of my heart. Even if this is a mirage, my palpitations have ended. I remembered you again, and everything was deleted from my memory. I wish I knew when the order for union will come. My heart burning with the fire of separation will always mourn will mourn with the freshest feelings to wait always. I wish I knew when the order for union will come. I'm finishing. My heart trembles like a dove because of your name. Please give me your wing to reach you. Give me a feather so I can fly constantly behind you. My heart trembles like a dove because of your name. O Rose, who turned the right deserts into paradise, come and enter my heart with your swinging colors. It is time, smile to my crying eyes. O Rose, who turned the right deserts into paradise. Thank you very much. <laughs>